What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another replay cast from the ladder. You saw that title correct. It's gonna be Flash versus Jadong. Flash back from his hiatus, laddering it up like a beast. He's been hitting every pro, pro player recently here. Everyone trying to snipe him for that content. And I guess we're doing a bit of the same, aren't we, Shin? Oh, we definitely are saying, and who can blame them? Who wouldn't want to get a game against this guy right now? Especially when he's not quite in his peak condition, so you can start getting some easy wins off the guy before he's right back at it. That's right, and you can see this is barcodes on both sides, but this blue barcode here is Flash. It's been confirmed. His opponent in the top left, that is Jadong, with the little one there in the middle. Kind of a copy of the barcode from Soma, but... Uh, you know, it's it's kind of messes up the point of the barcode, I feel. If you put a one right there, everyone can tell that that's you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too sure about the purpose of that. It kind of seems like a, 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 bit, a bit of a weird one, almost like they, they don't want to be seen, but they do want to be seen at the same time. It's kind of an interesting dynamic there. We do also see a 12 hatch, 12 hatch coming out of Jadong versus the 12 pool of Flash. So Jadong could have a slight build order advantage going into this and Jadong in back in the day was notorious for almost never conceding a game once he had the advantage. So let's see if he can uh, still maintain true to that here and take out Flash with a slightly advantageous position here. Yeah, I really can't imagine Flash uh, winning this game over Jadong. Jadong has been really working hard to perfect his game as of late. He's been practicing a ton getting ready for the next ASL and such, but Flash hasn't played for like three years now. It's been a long time and playing just off two, race. Pardon? Just over two, yeah. Just over two, I think so, yeah. And playing off race as well is going to be a serious challenge for him here. He's sending out the first six links. He hasn't scouted yet, so his uh, mind here, he doesn't know what his opponent is doing. He has no idea that this hatch is done. He's just going to be going for that quick speed, um, taking most of his drones off of gas, actually still leaving two remaining on gas. He's going to pump a ton of links and see what kind of damage he can do here. Yeah, if Jadong didn't make pure Zerglings here, there would be a, a small window for damage. He will have a slightly faster link speed, but a few free hits on his Zerglings by Jadong's links is going to afford Jadong the advantage here. Now it's going to be really hard for Flash to be able to defeat these links, so he's kind of in a little bit of a sticky situation. He wants to be able to just buy time for speed to finish so he can get in maybe get a drone or two, but I don't think Jadong's going to let him get more than a single drone. Yeah, it looked like he... Oh god, he's going to get trapped! Oh, he Whoa. does almost get trapped manages to slip out but takes a lot of damage and loses a couple more links he's gonna go for a drone not gonna be able to do so his layer timing and jadong's layer timing is pretty much even he gets one drone one more not quite able to get it only one drone killed just like you predicted and mm -hmm. now jadong gonna go uh send that uh pressure back across the map see if he can do some damage here a lot of links are in production and there's one sunken colony here for Flash. Is he going to be able to hold on against this? He doesn't start his Spire just yet. Whereas Jadong has his Spire on the way. I don't think Flash could afford to build it right now with the number of links he's going to have to produce to hold this. Yes, yeah, 18 links versus 12 and a sunken. Jadon can break this with a good surface area, but Flash is doing a pretty good job of denying him that, using a good job with the Sim City, denying too much surface area. So Jadon will have a little bit of a tough time getting all of the, the kills that he needs, but it doesn't really matter. Eventually, the links will start to be able to break through. He does snipe the one drone in the natural. Now the two links can run into the main, confirm the exact timing of the spy. He sees there's no spy and maybe even gets a drone kill. So this is a pretty advantageous position for Jadon going forward. Yeah, seeing that there's no Spire here um, means that he's going to probably be able to get some damage. His Spire is like 70% finished, so he's going to have Mutas out here a lot sooner than his opponent. He may end up forcing some Spore Colonies here or just a complete win off of this play. Still looking for some damage here in the main is Jadong running around with that one single Ling with low HP. He's going for the drone, doesn't quite get it but he's going to continue to run around here gain some more hp and try to go for that snipe once again a few drones are popping out here for flash 
Neither player taking their second gas just yet. This is a very tight game. Neither player really able uh, to drone up in this situation. Both of them just waiting for their units to pop out here and doing the best they can. Actually, look at that. Jadong is not building any mutas here, just pure Ling. Yeah, it looks like uh, he doesn't want to go for the kill move. I think he, maybe he calculates that there's still time that he could make Scourge to defend the Muir, so instead wants to try and uh, overwhelm Flash with a pure Link count, or rather prevent any damage being done to him before uh, he had some Muirs out. So he's going to kind of like put all of his eggs into one basket, make sure he wins the ground battle. But uh, actually, this works out a little bit okay for Flash so far, but the, the, if these two Links get into the main base and kill the drone, that's actually going to be a pretty devastating. Oh, they are definitely going to get a drone as well. Oh, pretty good micro there by Flash, but he loses two drones. A huge That's really blow. significant damage. He, yeah, even one drone was really significant, so two is huge. And now we see the Lynx going to work on this uh, expansion area, taking down the Sunken to very low HP. Might even get the snipe on that. Does get the snipe on that. Now the Lynx can buy time because the Mewers have to run back into the main base and deal with those while Jadong's getting his own Mewers out. And he did have a gas advantage this entire time. So even though he didn't initially make the Mutalisks, he can now make more Mutalisks than Flash can. Yeah, the Mutalisk count. Well, going in favor of Jadong right here, but not by much. Actually, we've got four Mutas, and it looks like four Mutas here on the side of Flash as well. Essentially, fifth and sixth now joining. Will he just go in for an attack right away? Uh, his gas, second gas, is a little bit later than Flash's, surprisingly. He's not going to have much money at all. I think we're going to see a lot of Scourge out of Flash in this situation because he just doesn't have the, the mineral income at the moment. He's still a drone right. behind his opponent. Oh, he picks up that Scourge. Going to go for the fight here, but there's way too many mutas for Jadong, and GG is called. Flash taps out, and we're going to go on to a second game here. That's right. We've got another game here with Jadong versus Flash. He managed to snipe him twice yesterday, so we're going to jump right on into that game. All right, game number two here. Flash starting off in the bottom right-hand corner. We got Jadong in the top left. The rematch here. Jadong managing to snipe this man once again, but this time on his main race. This should be a hotly contested game here. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, Flash is definitely not going to like bring the kind of caliber of play we'd want him to bring right now, but it's still going to be a pretty interesting game nonetheless, especially these two people having such vast range of experience, both individually in the StarCraft scene and against one another as well. So we'll be curious to see how this game transpires. Looks like Flash not going to be doing any CC first shenanigans, just going to be taking his one racks FE kind of style while Jadon got LX for the uh, 12 hatch. Yeah, and we didn't mention it last game, but these guys have an incredible storied history against each other. Been going back and forth since the old days of OSL and MSL. Uh, kind of pinnacle of Brood War pre-remastered. But uh, in the modern era, they haven't really had too many games together because they've both taken... Uh, opposing times to go to the military, right? Jadong went before Flash, and then right as Flash was leaving, Jadong was coming back. So they haven't fought against each other much as of late in the previous few years, I guess four to six years since they've really gone head to head here. Yeah, that's right. So and you could argue that's the most elaborate dodge in uh, competitive gaming history. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's unfortunate that these guys have to leave it all, but it's uh, understandable. Uh, the Korean Peninsula is a little bit scary place to be. Never know when North Korea is going to decide to attack, so they have to make sure everybody's ready to fight over there, and that includes pro gamers. <laughs> yeah, everyone is involved, unfortunately. It's the state of affairs. To see Jadong going to be taking that lair just after the 302 mark. So we'll be getting a slight la uh, lava optimization from making that a little bit delayed. The lava will spawn just before the lair's finished. The lair will finish, and another lava will pop out. So slight lava optimization from Jadong there. We saw a, a slightly delayed CC because even though Flash saw the uh, SEV, uh, they saw the Overlord in the bottom left with his SEV. Um, wasn't able to get up there quick enough to see the 12 hatch opening, so wasn't able to throw down that 15cc, did have to make the marine first. 
uh, but it's going to be following that with a five minute two rex timing so that could be pretty strong still yeah it could be strong but we are on cross map position so that's quite a long rush distance he also doesn't have that mickey mouse wall here which is so powerful no. on this map in this position so moving out across the map is going to be a little bit uh, risky Especially if there's a Ling counter attack that's ready to go here from Jadong. They may have to produce a couple of fire bats to follow that up. Um, just not having the wall is a, a bit of an issue. Spire is going to start and it's all being viewed here by Flash. He sees the third hatch. He sees the build completely and totally. And we'll be preparing for that on his side of things. Yeah, it this is really good for Terran to be able to identify exactly the timing of things. I mean, he could have made an educated guess as to what Jadong was doing, but confirming the 2.5 hatch is going to be really important to know how to optimize his own builder in dealing with this. Looks like he's going to go all the way up to 10 Marines before even starting his medics. He's got a little bit of a delayed academy, so he's going to be just caring about getting a really large bio count. He's not going to try and push across this crap cross spawn position to do any kind of pressure with like an early push. He's instead going to play a lot more defensively, it seems. Yeah, a few links out here right now, but not enough to the really utilize counterattacks here. He's going to be checking to see when the Marines are leaving the base, but that's about all these are going to be able to do is just spot and let him know when he needs to throw down sunken colonies. The Spire is getting very, very close, so maybe he doesn't need sunken colonies at all. Getting away with a three hatch build. Or a 2.5 hatch and not having to build any sunken colonies is very nice for Jadong. He's spreading his lings all over the map, making sure there's nothing to hide here for Flash. And a third base coming up here at the 12 o'clock, interestingly. Yeah, and he even forced a bunker out of the uh, Flash. And you do want to make this bunker e e either way, ideally, because the mutas can distract the bio units into the main base while the links come in and stab the turrets in the natural. So this bunker is still very valuable to Flash nonetheless, but he did have to throw that down pretty early, and Jadong didn't have to throw down any sunkens, like you say. So Jadong's extremely optimized right now, whereas Flash is having to cut a few corners to make sure he's safe in this early game. So, so far, I'd favor Jadong. A lot of turrets going up here in the main base. This is a bit of a problem area here for the Terran. You've got this commsat station and all these buildings kind of thrown around this small area here in the main and behind the mineral patches is incredibly dangerous. Uh, Mutas can get back there and just keep killing SCVs. It's very hard to dislodge them. Flying right on in here, taking quite a bit of damage on that first Muta, almost losing it down to just 33 HP. So not the best start here for Jadong. We'll see how he, he, he does with his attack. Oh, he's transitioning. Jadong's already transitioning. These five mutas are just a fake out to force a reaction out of the Terran. He's actually going to do a really fast transition already. He only made five mutas. And uh, now he's getting a carapace upgrade instead of attack. So he might even later on go for guardians at some point because he could be lined up for that with this fast queen's nest as well. Yeah, very interesting. And an evolution chamber. It seems like Jadong's doing just about everything all at once right now. Everything except for harassing with these mutas and building up a muta count. He's starting his lurker upgrade. He's getting carapace. He's going to be getting his hive started here soon. A scan goes down. So Flash sees everything. But what is his reaction going to be? I guess getting right on into starport. Will he go for some sort of tank push? Because it's going to be hard to stop on this map. He's actually got a tank on the way. Machine shop is down. He's going to be getting that uh, siege mode here shortly. We're going to see a tank push out of Flash, 100%. Yeah, I think tank push is actually a pretty good call as well. Uh, it looks like uh, Jadong, though, even with just a handful of mutas, is doing a great job of uh, shaving off a few of these Marines links coming in from the top as well to try and help with that. So, so far buying a little bit of time, but there isn't much units remaining for Jadong. So he's kind of trying to desperately buy as much time as he can so he can get this lurker aspect finished, start morphing lurkers, because otherwise Flash could put on a lot of pressure soon. And with the tank push, he's going to be able to hit him a lot sooner and then defilers will be ready so there's going to be a little window here for flash to get something done yeah that's the way it is with most tank pushes you've got to get some damage going uh, in this mid game before all the tech sprouts out of the zerg the hive is just about done he's going to throw down that defilers den uh, defilers mound excuse me here pretty darn soon so Flash really needs to get across this map. He's got one tank sitting at his natural. 
Running straight up here is gonna focus down the sunken colony, but there's like a lot of lurkers here, man. He can't be around once these burrow. Gonna run right in here. He kills a lot of drones. They burrow. He scans and kills two. Three of them are gonna go down. That's amazing targeting here for Flash. And look at the position on those medics as well. This was a decent trade by him. Eliminating a bunch of those drones and picking off three lurkers right off the bat, but his army is very small. And now that tank push we were talking about earlier, it's gonna come a little bit too late, I feel, for mm. the uh, Defilers. Defilers gonna be done. As the tanks are coming across the map, there's not gonna be too many Marines with this either. So this is gonna be a bit tough for Flash to make this work now. Yeah, I can't, ne I can't necessarily fault Flash for trying to go for that. With, with a good targeting, he had a lot of potential there to do significant damage to Jadong. It was actually kind of a dream scenario for him to be able to get in there and to, to do the drone, the, the damage to the drones that he did and also focus down the lurkers. Uh, so it was, a, it was a fairly okay trade, but the reality is, is that now he doesn't have enough support units for this tank push, so he didn't quite get enough damage done that he needed to for sacrificing those units. But it still could be Flash's game if he can get on top of these lurkers and try and navigate around them. Uh, quickly enough before the defilers are out. The consumes only just now starting, so there's a, still a small window, but it's gonna be tight. Scourge now trying to get on top of the vessel. Do snipe oh. the vessel, that's really bad news for Flash now. Yeah, you can see a bit of the rust here for Flash. Oh, he takes that huge spine as well. Oh my god. Tons of Marines going down right on this front line here. That was brutal, brutal damage. Losing the science vessel. Never a good feeling either. I think Flash would have definitely clicked down those, uh, at least one of those Scourge had he been on top of his game, but you can see there just running back and hitting that A click, probably missing the Scourge there, and he ends up losing that first science was the crucial, crucial part of this push. Now the tanks are shoving forward here, but they just can't shove these lurkers back like they could with the first science vessel. Now one's popped out, but defilers are finished and consume is just about done. Here we go. He's going to shove forward one last time, but there's the consume. He's going to throw down the dark swarm and this is held. No problem. He's going to run forward even and try to jump on top of these tanks, forcing the un siege and killing one of them. He's got crackling upgrade finished already as well. Wow. Jadong has held this beautifully, and now Flash is going to have to transition into some sort of uh, expansion play here. He needs another couple of command centers and a lot more barracks to take on Jadong in the late game. Yeah, I think the Flash of old would have already had the command center on the way, but the Flash we've got right now currently hasn't yet started that. Doesn't even have the control tower on his second starport, so a little bit off his macro beat is Flash currently in Jadong, currently now sitting on 41 drones to 45 SCV, so the macro and production of Jadong is going to be ramping up exponentially against Flash going forward here, and I feel like this is going to be a gradual Jadong victory after he secured such a well-executed delay on this tank push that now Flash is just going to be struggling to try and stabilize in this game. Well, we can't count Flash out ever. This man is crazy, crazy good, even though he's got a bit of rust on him. And one thing I will say for Flash is that the 12 o'clock expansion for Jadong does not lead into a very easy and defendable fourth base. He's gonna have to defend in multiple locations, including that center left at the top center and his natural. So that's gonna be a bit of a struggle here for Jadong. Oh, nice plague there on those two science vessels. Getting great value out of those uh, defilers here. And I haven't really seen many good uh, irradiates so far. And you can see Jadong going to dive on top of these tanks. He's going to get some easy kills on those. And Flash, I mean, another big plague going down. He is taking a lot of damage from these early defilers. Yeah, I really don't see how Flash is going to get enough cost efficiency in fighting this style of Jadong. The Hydra Defiler style is just going to be way too much for him going up against this. He's only just now got his third base online, but the problem is, is he hasn't got a third gas. And without a third gas, and the Zerg is going to probably be able to comfortably take this fourth. There is some potential here. Flash could try and deny this fourth gas, and maybe he can make something work from here. It's going to be a little bit of a tall order for me. He's going in there now. Maybe if Flash can just kill this hatchery at the 9 o'clock, he can maybe make something work. All right, running right up in here with a bunch of Marines. He's going to kill this base, it seems. That is a really big kill here. Picking that off means that 
we're still stuck on three gases for Jadong, and three gas is still okay when you're going Hydra Defiler, but you really want to get that fourth gas secured as quickly as possible, and that's just been denied now. Coming down here with the Hydras, he's got plus two armor, but he doesn't have any attack upgrades finished yet for these Hydras. So they're not going to be uh, trading well against the two one upgraded Marines just yet. Those upgrades are coming along though. No second Evo chamber though, and I feel like Jadong really needs a second Evo if he wants to take this into a late game with the Hydra Defiler style. Yeah, I, there, there is, there's currently two Evos, one in the main, one in the natural for Jadong. Um, he's only researching one grade at a time right now. Um, definitely needs to be on top of his upgrades going forward because Flash does have his 3-2 uh, on the way. Plus two armors just finishing, plus one, plus three weapons is about 25% done. Uh, currently some Scourge sharking around the 12 o'clock position, trying to snipe some of these vessels. Flash is going to be on top of that because Jadon will take those away from him if he just looks away for one second. So he's going to be really on top of supporting these vessels with these Marines. At the moment, it's almost like the vessels are the army and the Marines are the support units in situations like this. Oh, a couple more science vessels over here on the center left. Almost getting picked off there, but he manages to keep them alive, but just barely. The Filer here. Oh, just gets down its Dark Swarm with 13 HP remaining. It's gonna irradiate and kill that off, I believe. No, going for a Hydra, actually, funnily enough. Still holding ground here over in the center right, but he loses, or so on the left, excuse me, but he loses two Science Vessels to a couple of Scourge. That's a big loss here for Flash. He needs to keep that Science Vessel count high. His third base is running. He probably needs to get a fourth base here relatively soon as well. A couple of radiates going down in the top right. There's no Nidus up here yet, so the constant irradiates will eventually break this base. But uh, he's got to stay here and keep irradiating over and over again in order to make that happen. Scourge running into Mutas, or running into Marines, excuse me, dying uh, and not getting their damage off on these science vessels. A bunch of Marines trading with Hydras here in the middle. This is kind of a crazy game now. Yeah, I think Flash is about to take the 6 o'clock base, and that's going to really help him out. Another big plague in the middle of the map. Yeah, I think Flash right now just needs to secure the 6 o'clock, get, get another gas going, and then we can actually win from here. It's, a, it's still a little bit of a dicey situation. This is going to be a very unit, uh, very uh, cost-efficient unit composition for us to deal with here as Flash, but he can still make it work. He's still got pretty good map control. He's denied this fourth gas going up for quite some time. He's now going to be taking the 6 o'clock base so that he can get his, third, his own third gas online. Right now, he's got so many minerals, but just not enough gas to churn out the units that he needs to take on a, such a cost-efficient uh, uh, army that Jadon's going to be throwing at him. Yeah, and it looks like he's coming up towards the top right as well, trying to break through here. There is a Lurker stack, but it's only two Lurkers, and now only one Lurker with the other being irradiated down. Jadon gonna come up and try to save this with a bunch of Lings and Hydras. Three Defilers are moving across the map here as well. Looks like he wants to save this base very, very badly, but Flash already up on this high ground. Maybe this will turn into a counterattack from Jadon instead. Now that the army has made its way up on the high ground, it's going to kill this base. And Jadon going to go straight across the map and try to do some sort of an attack here. Defilers and Hydras moving across the map. These two Defilers trailing behind. They need to get a Plague down on the right-hand side here. Get a Plague or something. Do something with this. Tons of energy just being wasted. Oh, no. Both of those Defilers go down without doing anything, but the base has been cracked here. He's going to lose the Command Center. Command Center being focused here. He does lose it now. Uh, 5 oh. HP. <laughs> He's going to burn. Oh, there we go. It burns down. Closure for that kill. Oh, getting a bunch of Ooh. vessels with these Hydras as well. It's something you've got to be worried about. As the Terran player, you cannot be allowing the vessels to just go down and walk over top of a Hydras like that. Meanwhile, the third or the the mineral only died. I didn't even see that. I wonder what happened there. Looks like everything has been cleared up, but losing that, that fourth base is very painful. He's still on three gases, by the way. 
Yeah, the, he, he, the Flash went over and sniped that mineral only while Jaden was distracted defending the top right and then moving through the middle of the map. So Flash kind of took advantage of a small auxiliary force of units to take out that mineral only meanwhile. So stiffening the amount of lings and hydras that Jadon can make for the time being. And Jadon, like you say, still hasn't got this fourth base going. So without that fourth gas, it's going to be a little bit hard for Jadon if Flash remains unchallenged for much longer. He does have this six o'clock now starting to go online with the gas starting to go up now. So it's going to be really tough for um, both players if either of them make a, make a small misstep here. So it's going to be come down to their army control. But right now, it's still 40 drones for Jadon. Still looking pretty strong in the production, but he has got to get this fourth base back online and try and put some counter pressure on Flash, who's currently roaming around the map with pretty decent amount of map control being seized away from Jadon. Just now, as you were talking there, Jin, the extractor in the main ran out of gas. So a big uh, turning point here for the Zerg is when those gases start to run out, you need additional bases uh, at this time because that uh, gas economy is so vitally important here. Uh, we have to see Jadon take another base in the next minute or so, I would say. Otherwise, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Only a thousand gas remaining on the, the natural. And the third is going to get mined out equally as fast. Only 1,100 there. Moving over towards the top right. He's trying to get a position here to maybe snag the upper right bases. But is not able to get up there right now. Oh god, he's gonna be cracked here in the top center. The knight is popping out a bunch of hydras, but he needs more than just hydra to break this. Here comes a defiler, he gets a dark swarm and a plague, but drones are going down en masse. Meanwhile, a, the third base is being attacked as well, but all these marines have been plagued, so they're gonna die very, very quickly to the hydralis attacks. A lot of chaos going on right now, but Jadon yeah. seems to be clearing things up. Yeah, no, and during all this madness beforehand, Jadong sniped the science facility that was floating in the bottom left, so now Flash can't even make science vessels for the time being. Oh, that's huge. That is huge. Really, really good play there from Jadong. Killing that one building alone is going to make things very complicated now for Flash. He's got to build another science vessel as quickly as possible. He's lifting off one of his star ports and floating it. I don't know where that's going. Maybe he's... Uh, opening up some space so he can get tanks out. I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but he's going to float that over while the science facility builds. I don't see it building anywhere. Okay, it is on the production tab. Flash moving through the middle of the map. The base in the top right is absolutely critical. I'm surprised that Jadong is not building, you know, two different bases. One maybe in the top left, right, one in the bottom left here, just to make sure one of these sticks because it's essential that he keeps one of these alive right now. Yeah, he really needs to do that. So, and, and but Flash also is starting to become mined out. And you're completely correct, by the way. He floated that starport purely because his tanks were having to go all the way around the barracks to get out. So it's really hurting his unit flow and getting those tanks out. So he's going to be remaking the the control tower at another location, and also has now finally finished that science facility back up again. So can start that vessel production once more. We do currently have an even work account of 43 drones to 45 SCVs, three two upgrades on the Zerg units and 3-2 on the Terran. Uh, armor, armor advantage for the Zerg and weapons advantage for the Terran currently. So yeah, I think right now this still favors Jadong a little bit and another science vessel being caught in the middle of the map. I think slowly now Jadong will start to get enough plagues and a critical mass of hydras to be able to combat this army of flesh. Oh, great plague here in the middle of the map. These hydras are gonna rip this army apart. Oh my God, that was brutal. All those Marines going down here in the middle, but there are now tanks on the field, and this defensive position is very, very hard to break. I think Jadong needs to just focus, rather than attacking right now, more on getting this base in the top right rolling, and maybe getting a second base up here, because his uh, additional gas are about to mine out. Only 200 gas on the natural at the moment. He needs those bases right here, right now. Getting more plagues, though, is incredibly valuable. All of these science vessels are now plagued and can be picked off by one shot from these Hydras. Yeah, I think one thing that um, Jadon was a little bit scared about was not putting on pressure there and allowing Flash to maybe sneak out an expansion. Uh, if he can just keep Flash on these four bases, he's only on two base worth of production currently and he's about to be mined out of his second gas. So he'll only be on one gas worth of production himself. 
And now with Jadong securing a space in the top right, that would put him in a positional advantage. So right now the game state really heavily favors Jadong. But uh, that doesn't mean that Flash can't still secure an expansion soon, but it's going to be very difficult for him if Jadong does decide to keep putting the pressure on and keep chaining plagues. Prudent play here from Flash to go ahead, take his, star, uh, his uh, science vessels back and repair them all so that the Hydras can't get those uh, instant snipes on them. But another great play goes down on these blue Terran units, making them all red. Another play goes down as well. Oh my god. Plagues all over the place and just like you said chaining plagues here is gonna be so difficult for flash to deal with uh, Yeah, there's just um, nothing really you can do about it except for try to build up this tank count and maybe go a little bit slower As you push forward some army moving around the right hand side here is gonna get caught by a small group from flash And this is great play as a Terran player to send little groups around to make sure that none of these hydralisk uh, lurker attacks uh, with the one single defiler managed to make their way over to uh, an unprotected base yeah right now there's a big skirmish going on in the bottom left flash lost uh control group units trying to take the mineral high ground area and now it looks like jay going to be sniping off some of these vessels and isolating them in their six o'clock position flash is going to have to come over with some units from the right hand side to make sure the hydras can't pin in those vessels on that location but it looks like jay might want to be starting to assault this position up here and there's only a one single tank to hold this position to, to really survive in a situation like this you need to be getting your tank count up to like 12 to 24 you need like a huge arsenal of tanks to be able to fight against something like this in the late game and because flash hasn't able to take any more gases it's going to be really hard for him to ever achieve that kind of high tank count that he needs to fight against this late game zerg composition zerg ballooning in supply here with those additional bases going down he's now up to 143 20 supply ahead of his terran opponent looking very very good and poised to take this game as he pushes through the middle kills off a ton of these marines but not the greatest surface area there. Nice dark swarm to keep these Hydralis alive. The Lurkers advance. We will have to see Flash backing away here once again. Jadong just taking map control here in a big way now. Uh, as Flash is forced all the way back to his natural. Yeah, Jadong's currently ahead by like 27 supplies. It's getting a little bit scary now. 53 drones to 45 SCVs. Flash has not grown at all over the duration of the past 8 or 10 minutes, whereas Jadong has continued to grow this entire time. And the general rule of thumb of Terran is you need to be able to keep growing. And if you're unable to do so, you might oh. fall behind quite drastically. All oh, the science vessels getting absolutely obliterated in the bottom left by just a couple of Hydras, Lurkers also being a little bit of a thorn in um, Flash's side here, having to waste so many units to break these small positions to try and take away some map control away from Jadong. It looks like it's not going to be enough. Oh now we'll see a huge flank in the middle. Of... <laughs> huge so flank in the middle units. with us. A... <laughs> it looks like uh, almost like box art, you know, like what's how Zerg was intended to be played, just completely engulfing the Terran army in the late game stage. GG is called from Flash. Ah, oh, beautiful surround there. Sorry for cutting you off, Shin, but that was amazing. Amazing surround in the middle there to finish that game off. Looks like Jadon gonna stick around for a little while. Just celebrating his victory here. And there we go. The game is over. Wow, what an epic showing there from both players. I really enjoyed that one, guys. That was that was a ton of fun to watch. All right, here are your statistics for that match. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. You have a good time there, Shin. That was cool as shit to watch. Oh, yeah, I'd love to see Jaden West's flesh, man. This is money right here. This is what we're all here to see. Uh, absolutely. We're going to be bringing you guys new games every single day. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to make sure you're never late to your daily dose of Brood War. Uh, Flash has been playing a ton of games on ladder recently. I've got a Flash versus Action series. I've got a Flash versus uh, JYJ series here. I've got a Flash versus just about everybody who's anybody in Brood War right now uh, has been sniping this guy and get, giving him a decent series. We've got Flash versus Rain. I think that's what we're going to be doing next. But let me know in the comments below, guys, what you want to see. We've got Flash vs. Shine. We've got Flash vs. Rush. We've got so many great series, guys. Get hype for Flash returning to the scene.
and I'll see you guys in the next video.